What is going on guys? It's Nick from Surfcasting Island back at you with another video. I know it's been quite some time since I posted previous content on this channel. Um, in regards to my Instagram, I've been rather active on that, which is kind of a reflection. I've been doing a decent amount of fishing, not as much as I've wanted to, um, nor have I had the results that I've desired this past fall. I know there are people I could say otherwise, especially my friends and my friend group and in my circle of guys, props to them for getting on fish. Um, but it just, it hasn't been there for me really. I've had the, a lot of the one fish, two fish nonsense deals. Um, the occasional skunk, you know, five to 10 fish days. Um, but the one thing I could really take away from this season in particular was being able to get away from the crowd a little bit in certain instances and finding new spots. And that's going to be great going into the spring of 23 and, you know, anticipating new ground to cover, so on and so forth. Um, but neither here nor there, the topic of discussion today is going to be the Van Stoll VS X2 series that I was fortunate enough to pick up from my local shop props to LI Outdoorsman. Um, so let's get into it shortly. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. So for those who may or may not know about Van Stoll as a company, they've been in business the past 30 years. Um, this year marks the 30th anniversary in which they've also released the X2 in gold, only in the VSX Gen 2 size 200 reel that was in i believe only 500 total in terms of how many were released so a pre-order was necessary to obtain that reel um the company as a whole the foundation lies on the fact that it's a very durable product longevity is up there it's a reel that it stood the test of time. It's used by a lot, if not most, or all Top Gun surf casters on the Northeast Coast. Um, this is what this reel was designed for. It was designed to take the harshest conditions at the end of the island, in Montauk, all the way to the Cape, you name it, this reel could perform under all conditions. Up front, the inlets, back bays, in terms of how long I've been using these reels, I believe this is going to be five years and six seasons for me. And out of all that time and all those hours put on each of these reels and each of these products, all I can say is I have little to no complaints outside of the fact of your, you know, once in a while servicing. But you're going to do that with any reel in any regard if you care about an investment that much. There's no... There's no reel out there, conventional spinning, waterproof, not waterproof, that you're not going to have to open up and service at one point or another. They all have to. But the fact of the matter is, this reel could go the longest without doing that. And <clears throat> they're just literally built, like I said, for these harsh conditions particularly for stripers and blues. I know other guys down south will target tarpon or plug for rooster fish along the Cabo Flats, so on and so forth. But for my purposes, 95% of my fishing has been done targeting striped bass and bluefish throughout my entire life. So now I'm gonna get into next, the specifications of the reel, as well as the modifications between each generation so stay tuned so i'll start off uh, with the specifications of the reel um i believe between the x1 and the x2 nothing has changed in terms of the gear ratio like craig said over at van stoll they pretty much own that market in terms of anywhere from the 150 size all the way up to the vs250 so this all remains the same and the, the gear ratio on the 150 being that 475 to 1. So it's not the fastest, it's not the slowest, but that gear ratio is a good middle ground between still having torque and power to move a big fish. 
In terms of the drag output on both the Gen 1 and Gen 2, I believe they also remain at 32 pounds of drag, which is absolutely massive for a spinning reel this size and this caliber. You'll probably, you'll probably never have to use 32 pounds of drag when you're striped for fishing. That's just the way it was built and the gearings and the maximum output. Not that I recommend because even running, you know, 20, 30 pound test in theory, you want to, you want to set that drag. I forgot. I, I believe in theory, people say it's one third to the pound test line you have or something like that. Don't quote, don't quote me on, but there you have it. The, the gearing and the drag has uh, stayed the same, but without further ado, I'm going to get into what is different visually and aesthetically between the Gen 1 and Gen 2. So right off the bat, picking up the Gen 2, I realized that they all come stock now with a power grip knob as well as a power grip drag handle, which is contrary to the Gen 1 and the USA original VS, which all, um, which all came with the standard drag knob as well as the, <clears throat> the standard grip handle um and again i feel like that's going to be a major improvement um it's going to be easier to latch on and adjust to drag especially if you're fishing at night as well as fighting fish with that power knob it's going to be a lot easier and a lot more firm to grab onto your hand's not going to slip off as easily if it were to be wet or slimy from catching fish or what have you, whatever the case may be, it's going to be a lot easier to turn the handle over and over again on the Gen 2, in my opinion. Um, something that may not be as obvious to the keen eye, especially someone that hasn't picked up and used the van stall, is that they extended the real foot on the Gen 2. Um, there are a lot of complaints regarding the scraping and knuckles against the roller of the Gen 1 van stall as well as the USA made van stalls. Um, with every revolution of the spool, what would happen was the roller would typically someone who <laughs> have big hands, which I happen to have big hands, the roller would knock into your knuckles, thus, thus scraping your knuckles. <clears throat> Again, if that's the biggest problem I've seen in this reel, that's pretty damn good because this reel, the X1, and I have a couple original USA made ones, they've stood the test of time, very little to no complaints outside of, like I said, the occasional servicing. Um, but other than that, a fantastic product, like I keep emphasizing over and over again. Um, it was also an improvement on some of the smaller reels as well because granted you know vr50 is a pretty small reel it's a three thousand it's like equivalent to a three or four thousand size stratic or a, a pen clash or what have you so you know the scraping and knuckles was happening with that shorter reel seat so ergonomically it was a very big improvement when you had you know the foot of the reel secured on the reel seat of the rod less friction between the hand, very big improvement. Um, what else did they improve? They also, to my knowledge and visually seeing, they also got rid of the cup on all the X series reels now. So when you turn the handle on a gen two, there's no longer that revolving cup as you would have on the original or the gen one VSs. When you turn the handle, the spool would, and the spool and shaft would revolve up and down in the cup. Again, what would happen sometimes is sand would get stuck in between. That would kind of damage the side, not damage, no serious damage, but it would scrape the side of the spool because because <clears throat> of friction between sand. That would cause a scraping of the spool. Um, I guess you could call it an improvement. You could call it a modification. I don't think. It's a huge, huge improvement. It's more of aesthetically, they want to make this reel look different. It's a new generation of reels. Um, 
in terms of the porting, the porting is pretty much the same. Uh, for those who don't know what the terminology of porting is, that's pretty much drilling holes in the spool. So the top of the spool has porting as well as the side plate has the oval porting that's sideways. Um, the bottom porting is the same. <clears throat> and there's two purposes of doing this. Um, well, for one, it's to make it the reel lighter. That is one conventional purpose, the reel titanium, uh, not titanium. Aluminum is a pretty heavy metal material used to make this reel. So drilling as many holes in this reel as possible to make it lighter is something that would make sense. Um, the second reason being is it helps in terms of draining when not so much in the back bays but when you're fishing the inlets and up front and you're getting spray of the soak taking waves up over your chest up over your head you're going to want a reel that flushes out quickly that's not going to have um gear failure or any other problems or nonsense when you're out on a rock in the middle of the night now you realize well i gotta go back to the car and get a new reel because it's jammed up and i gotta take it into the shop to service it's not going to happen. You're not going to have that nonsense with a reel like this. So, again, the porting is a very important thing. The porting that did change on this reel is the fact that there's porting on the side. Very minor difference. It's not going to make much of a difference in terms of the difference in weight, but it'll definitely help in terms of being able to drain a lot easier as opposed to the previous model, the Gen 1 and the USA made ones. Um, that pretty much covers everything I've seen in the reel aesthetically. Now in the next section, I'm gonna get into what Van Stoll and Craig over at Van Stoll did to change the mechanics inside the reel and how it was put together in terms of composition. So stay tuned. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, the two major differences between the Gen 2 and the Gen 1 Van Stall mechanical improvements are as follows. So first things first, what they did was Van Stall went with the unibody design with the Gen 2. <clears throat> What I mean by that is the original USA made and the Gen 1 X series had three screws that put together the foot to the body of the reel, which would be in this location. In the X2, what they did was they made this a single design, no screws, no bolts to put this together. So this one piece between the foot and the body minus the handle is all one piece so in theory that is one less leakage point that water could get into as well as making it a more compact and strong one-to-one -one connection design have you will um, that also harps on the fact of i know it's kind of getting off topic and veering in a different direction but taking off the bail on a spinning reel is beneficial in the fact that it's one less part on the reel that could possibly fail or something that could possibly go wrong. There's nothing different in this case. It's just a different aspect of the reel between the footing and the gearing. Last but not least, the final improvement that I've been made aware of or I thought was very significant was the anti-reverse was moved from the handle to the pinion. What that does in this particular reel is there's no back play or negative play in the rotor of the spool. There's no back play. I'm, I'm pushing against the roller and it's not moving. If you were to do that with an original or a Gen 1 X-Series, 
when you push against the roller, you can see that it's got back play in the anti reverse. So that's a major improvement in the sense that, especially when you're fighting a bigger fish, God forbid the gears were to fail or blow out. That, that could be a problem. I've never had that problem, but in theory, that's why they made that improvement to the X2. So when you set the hook on that first fish, you're gonna feel that instant one-to-one, -one, no feedback connection with the anti-reverse. But neither here nor there, I am very, very pumped to fish this reel. It's probably not gonna be this season. I'll probably wait until the spring. The rod I intend putting it on is a carbon surf, 10 foot, six lama glass. It's too big pretty much for the fish that are left in our area. I'm probably just gonna stick with my Gen 1X series on my nine footer to cap off the season. I don't wanna oversize my equipment to catch, you know, 24 to 28 inch fish. It just doesn't really make much sense. Um, but coming into the spring of 23, I'm very excited to tackle nice size bass and gator bluefish whether that be in the inlets in the open beach which i intend to use this setup um that pretty much caps off this discussion if you guys like this video please like comment hit that subscribe button down below if you want to follow my instagram it's at surfcasting underscore the underscore island without further ado thank you and have a nice day